so Michael said, well, you come up with some ideas. And I came up with two fairly quickly. One was to remake an old film called The Seven Faces of Dr. Lau, mm -hmm. which was an old Tony Randall film that involved a, a child protagonist, uh, basically a Pied Piper story where uh, uh, a weird guy who takes on seven different personalities through animation, et cetera, uh, comes to a small town with a circus. And the other was to remake uh, the film Angels with 30 Faces, hmm. which is basically a James Cagney film. Michael was a huge James, Cag James Cagney fan, who uh, has a gang of kids and, 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 and again, a famous uh, film that's been parodied and, in a sense, remade in many ways. And Michael loved both projects. Uh, part of it was the way I explained it to him and talked him through it. And we had sketches done on one and, and creatures made. You really had to sort of turn it into the toy version. On Dr. Lau, we had set miniatures built of the circus. And uh, he committed to both, which was a major event at the time, that Michael would actually commit to projects. Mm -hmm. And one was set up at Warner's, and the other was set up at Turner, who owned the remake rights. And everything was going great. Fantastic. We were going to have two films with Michael. And then uh, the first scandal hit. I, I remember as vividly as I remember, you know, where, where, where I was when I heard President Kennedy was shot. Yeah. I was in my car driving to the small studio where we were building these miniatures where uh, people were going to come and actually see them. And someone called me and said, did you hear what's on the news? Michael Jackson's ranch has been raided. That was the first uh, accusation. And if you recall, Michael was quickly on his way to Japan for the first stop on his tour. And they sent me to Japan to bring the miniatures. They were very concerned that he was deeply depressed and that if he saw these miniatures, if he saw these toys, which were quite wonderful, I mean, they really were brilliantly executed and perfect for describing to him, and again, this childlike way what this film could be. But they said this is to kind of keep him positive, because right now he's thinking his world is over. Yeah. And I flew there, and that's a long story in itself, what happened when I got there, but it, but it, it, it worked the charm. He, he couldn't have been more delighted and happy and committed. But the truth of the matter is, put very simply, uh, you know, and, and in fairness to Hollywood and the big uh, studios, they have huge investment obligations to their shareholders. Uh, so they got very nervous. They didn't know if the audience would still be there for Michael. Yeah. So all the excitement about making films with him, where at that time if Michael committed to a film, any studio would have jumped, as they did with the two projects he committed to, the two that I brought to him, suddenly nobody wanted to touch him. 